Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. Arsenal waste a perfect opportunity to move within touching distance of Spurs and do the double over their London rivals with a 1-1 draw at Wembley. How did that happen? What did Spurs do right to get back into the game? Don't worry, here at the interviews, we've got you covered. So on this edition of the interviews, we're going to break down Arsenal's 1-1 draw at Spurs. So before we get into today's video, don't forget to give our video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it. The bell below does give you daily notifications regarding our organic, unfiltered soccer slash footy analysis. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Today's video, we're going to break down the first half, see how both sides look to approach the game, what Arsenal did right and what was lacking in Spurs' attack, and then move to the second half and see how Spurs were able to get back into the game and why Arsenal wasted another great opportunity. But first, let's get to the starting lineups. We look at Spurs, more of a 3-4-1-2 with Son and Kane ahead of Ericsson out in the wing back roles, Danny Rose, and they went with Karrion Trippier, and in midfield, Victor Wanyama and Musa Sissoko. Then we look to Arsenal, 4-2-3-1, Lacazette ahead of Ramsey, out in the wider areas, Mkhitaryan and Awobi, and in midfield, they went with Gunduzi and Xhaka. So now let's get to the first half, see how both sides look to approach the game, and what Arsenal did right in the opening half. When we look at Spurs against Arsenal, we have to break down the shapes and see how both sides look to approach the game. We had Arsenal dropping off, but what happened here was the positioning of Ramsey was interesting based on the fact that Spurs did have 3v1 going forward. So we want to see how Arsenal were going to engage to step forward. In the earlier stages, we did see Lacazette stick in the middle to Davison Sanchez. We saw Ramsey kind of push out to um, Toby Alderweireld, and that would init initiate Mkhitaryan to step down into the left-hand side to step to Vertonghen. And that's kind of how they went about things. But as the game did go on, we did see Ramsey kind of occupy a position near Wanyama. We still saw Mkhitaryan step to Vertonghen. We'll get to the, why he did that in a second. And then down the right side, there were two options for Alderweireld. It was either he was the spare man and often looking to play passes to the advanced Trippier, or what had happened is that you would have a Wobi step to him. Because when Arsenal were asked to drop off and sit off a bit deeper, what would happen was that Mkhitaryan and Iwobi would be tasked with cutting off the supply lines to the wing backs. But when they did step forward, and when they do step forward, what does need to happen here is that the wing, the full backs need to push forward. We saw it on Mustafi's side, who did play as a makeshift right back. He stepped into Danny Rose on several occasions, and that's why Arsenal were never really troubled on that side, because Mustafi and Mkhitaryan were ensuring that they did step into their markers. But down on this right hand side, Iwobi was often bypassed and Monreal wasn't stepping to Trippier so Trippier often had time to receive the ball and push forward or just tuck in just in behind it will be so that he could get a running start at Monreal and that was kind of how they were going about their business in that regard so that was interesting and that's kind of where Arsenal where Arsenal were susceptible to chances because it will be was stepping out and there was enough space for Trippier to push at Monreal because he wasn't looking to push forward with his marker like Mustafi was. When we look at Spurs though, the issues here kind of stem from the player, the personnel, because in midfield, they have Wanyama and Sissoko. None of the players were really looking to switch balls out to the wide players quick enough because they would have obviously had some sort of an advantage down the right-hand side. A lot of their passes were safe and they weren't getting much penetration from the attacking center backs either, who eventually were allowed to step forward and play passes but none of them were looking to break lines so Soko and Wanyama weren't doing that as well so it kind of left the Spurs front three on an island because Erickson wasn't really getting involved in the game and it allowed Arsenal to drop off into the shape where they had the four and Xhaka and Gunduzi didn't really have to do much because in, a, in an ideal world what it would be is that Ramsey would stick to uh, Wanyama, you would have to have Xhaka step out to Sissoko and Gunduzi tracking the movement of Ericsson. But they, as a central midfield pairing, unlike let's say Ericsson being in that deeper position, or let's say Harry Wings being able to shift the ball from flank to flank, they were unable to really push Spurs on forward because up front we saw the movement. Kane and Son were moving into these spaces, into the channels, and we'll get to some opportunities in a bit where they we saw those movements into that space. But Ericsson was unable to get involved, and it was just a bit odd because this would be a perfect template for Deli Ali with those two pulling out markers into the central positions and having Ali bomb forward but we weren't seeing enough of that and Spurs were struggling to create chances even though they were doing a good job keeping Arsenal at bay because when they try to press from the front what you would see here is that Spurs' central 
forwards would stick to the center backs. They'd have one player drop into Gunduzi, so they would, and then they would have Sissoko move into Xhaka. They would have that lined up. But one of the issues here was that the fullback, the wingbacks weren't getting high to Monreal or to um, Mustafi, which was a bit odd. And there was one occasion where we did see them try to play it out the back, and Ericsson was easily bypassed, and they were able to push forward in that regard. But for the most, by for the most part, they, Leno was able to clip balls out to Monreal, but nothing was really going his way down that left-hand side. But that's kind of how the game stemmed out. Arsenal, they were obviously looking to play on the counter-attack, but they were only held to a few counter-attacking opportunities. But when you look at how Spurs were getting their chances, there was no real surprise to see how they were really going about their business. And Toby, like I said, was one of the key players throughout. We've seen the first instance, Toby steps forward, Alderweireld slides the ball out to Monreal, starts the ball out to Trippier in an advanced position, and Monreal eventually steps to him. But we see Sissoko making a run off of a Wobi down into that right half right channel and he's able to hold off a Wobi, deliver a cross into the box that was eventually cleared so that was one opportunity the only time where you saw them kind of get the better of Mkhitaryan and Mustafi was one opportunity where Rose was held up by both of them and then you had Gunduzi in midfield and what we ended up seeing was a run being played off Gunduzi, and the run is the run that we see is from Sun. He's able to check out, then check in to get that ball that's wrapped around Mustafi. But his cross deflects off Socrates for a corner kick, so nothing really came from that either. On two occasions, we did see Spurs runners making darts into space behind Monreal when Toby, when Toby Alderweireld ended up sliding the ball out to Trippier. But on one occasion, we saw, um, on both occasions, we saw Koscielny pulled out. First, it was Ericsson who was pushed into that space, but Ericsson was able to get a cross in to the box that was cleared by Socrates. On the other occasion, we saw Sun break into that space, but Koscielny did a good job to force him to only settling for a corner kick or for a throw in. And their best opportunity that Spurs had from that play in that first half was when we saw Sissoko drop off into space. Sissoko dropped off into space to pick up the ball, and he ended up playing a pass to the left of Gunduzi for for his player and Son to drop off to pick it up at half and he instantly fired across in behind a Wobi for Monreal to pick up the ball. I mean for um, Trippier to pick up the ball ahead of Monreal when instead of going for a cross he squared it to Kane and when he squares it to Kane like I said we saw Kane kind of drift out into the space and we see finally for the first time Ericsson bombing forward and Ericsson makes a run beyond Socrates for Kane to chip it to him and he volleys his effort on goal that is saved and then Sissoko fired the rebound that forced Leno into another great save so that was how Spurs were going about their business they were finding space behind a Wobi trying to find space behind Trippier but lacking penetration in deeper areas and lacking any cohesion and link play between those deeper players into the forwards. So they played through the wings and they're able to create some chances. But now when we get to Arsenal, we see that they really did lack counter-attacking threats going forward. However, they did score their goal from the counter and created their second best chance from that same route. The first one, it stems from Harry Kane being closed out in the right half space and Xhaka playing the ball into what should have been Lacazette, but what happened there is that Davinson Sanchez steps to the ball first, but mistimes his header into the ground, and it falls to Lacazette, who sees Ramsey running off his marker in behind the Arsenal defense in Wanyama, and he slides the ball to him, and he gets to go 1v1 with Loris round him and place his effort past the keeper. Shortly after that, toward and after the goal, what we end up seeing is that Xhaka again is behind everything from a deeper position following a Socrates clearance, and what he ends up doing is playing the ball to Ramsey, who ends up pulling out his marker in Toby Alder Viral, and he pulls out Alder viral and drops it off to Mkhitaryan and Mkhitaryan is able to skip past Vertonghen and then play it back to Ramsey and what Ramsey ends up doing is he gets away from other viral and pokes the ball between him and Wanyama tracking for Mkhitaryan but it ends up falling just in behind him but Sissoko slips so Mkhitaryan is able to slide the ball out wide to Awobi who goes 1v1 with Trippier and he's able to gain a yard on Trippier and force Leno into a big save we break down the half as a whole like I said Spurs just struggling in central midfield to facilitate passes out to the wider areas where they had distinct advantages. Rose against Mustafi, who looked uncomfortable, but did his job to a team in terms of closing down spaces. 
and down the right hand side where they had Trippier getting in behind um, it will be and finding space in behind Monreal they, they really needed Erickson to push forward and they needed a link in midfield so now it's up to Pochettino to see what he could do in the second half to change things so when we look at the second half we have to observe how Arsenal were able to create chances but how Spurs were able to battle back into the game the second half didn't provide much of a spark, but what we did see was Torreira come in for Gunduzi. so Arsenal didn't really change their shape, and this was about Spurs trying to get back into the game. We saw both sides exchange opportunities in the earlier stages. We saw Rose playing a pass into Harry Kane as he pushed forward, and he was able to get away from two challenges to slide the ball in behind Alex Awobi for Trippier breaking forward into that right channel but that cross was overhit and it kind of summed up Spurs' afternoon in a nutshell able to find space behind a Wobi but not being able to make the difference in the final third on the other hand we did see Arsenal flips and push forward as well again it was Xhaka finding space in between Trippier and in between other viral for Lacazette who's able to slide the ball out to a Wobi and what we did see here and it's the second time in those opening 10 minutes of the second half where we saw Emery kind of instructing Monterey to make that overlapping run this time he does it and no one's picking him up so it will be slides into him towards the byline and as markers push out to him he's able to pull the ball back to Lacazette in the box but he shanked his shot wide of the net it kind of showed how both sides were looking to approach the game but shortly after that we saw Pochettino turn to his bench he took off Wanyama he brought on Lamella that instantly saw Spurs move to more of a 3-4-2-1 with Lamella and Son in behind Kane and pushed Erickson deeper which did kind of make sense and now Spurs were looking to push forward to try and get the equalizer but but that didn't really lead to many clear-cut opportunities as the game eventually wore on we saw them move to pr prematurely to a 4-2-3-1 Danny Rose ended up moving into midfield with Sissoko we saw eventually um, so Vertonghen moved out into left back and there was Erickson in behind Kane but what ended up happening there also was that we saw Rose play a poor pass from midfield trying to find Vertonghen and it was Mkhitaryan who picked it up and he was now able to break forward and here Spurs were nearly punished as he run, ran at the back four we ended up seeing Mkhitaryan play the ball across the center backs for Aubameyang breaking in who replaced Lacazette but Sissoko tracked it well and cleared the lines Emery ended up taking off Ramsey for Mesut Ozil as the game wore on and what ha ended up happening was that they ended up conceding from a penalty Erickson free kick into the box. Mustafi, Kane arguably, Kane looked like he was offside. We're not here to discuss that. But Mustafi did push him down. It was a penalty. And what happened there was Kane was able to convert it. And shortly after that, we saw Lorente come on for, Lorente come on and we saw Spurs move to a 4-4-2 where you had Lorente and you had a cane up front you had um, Lamella and Erickson tucking in and that would allow the fullbacks to push forward with Rose and Sissoko in midfield but Spurs never really generated another clear-cut chance after that and it was actually Arsenal who had the final opportunity to win the game and it stemmed from a similar move where we see this time a pass from Rose into the ball, or is Vertonghen who was looking to play a pass. And what happened here is Vertonghen plays, tries to play the pass into Kane, but it's Mikatarin who intercepts it again and breaks forward past him and now runs at the center backs. And as he does that, we see Aubameyang making the run off of Davinson Sanchez ball is wrapped around him into the right channel and he falls down on the referee awards another penalty and what ends up happening here is that Lloris makes a huge save to deny him and Vertonghen cleared the rebound off the line when we break down the game as a whole we look at how Arsenal approached it and yes for the large for a large portion of the game, they did look worthy of the three points despite lacking a counter-attacking threat and despite being vulnerable out in the wider areas, but they did look shaky at the back in those wider areas for large spells as well. And it was no surprise that one of the players, whether Mustafi or Monreal, did make a mistake that led to a penalty. And that's what happened here. Whereas for Spurs, they just look like they don't have the players, the personnel to fit what they try to do here, lacking creativity in central areas, lacking a link and the center backs 
probably a bit too many of them in this game, but because of Arsenal's counterattacking threat, you need that extra cover, and they were unable to really get Kane and Son into the game. So you look at it, Arsenal can't find their right 11 based off the balance of the side, Spurs lacking key players, and a, a of draw is a fair result here but let me know what you guys think which one of these sides will finish in the top four or will it be both of them and which one of them are looking well prepped for the future meet me in the comments below don't forget to upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this video give it a thumbs up and that was your daily dose of the interviews